This is a description of the hog electrolyzer. Selwyn Harris of Australia introduces the hog electrolyzer, which produces four and a half or five litres of HHO gas mix per minute. And because of that, it is capable of running a modified generator to produce kilowatts of excess energy. A hog electrolyzer cell has got two stainless steel mesh electrodes coiled around each other. This gives a large electrode surface area in a very compact container. In this design there are six identical cells all of which feed into a large bubbler. For clarity only two of these six cells are shown here. This is an electrolyzer cell here producing HHO and this is another electrolyzer cell also producing HHO. They're completely filled with electrolyte, which surprisingly in this case is rainwater. And there is a little pump which pushes water, which has been filtered from the bubbler, through two collectors and out into each of these uh, electrolyzer cells. The pump pushes up both the rainwater and the bubbles of HHO through a one-way valve and down into the lower part of the bubbler. The bubbler is filled up to this line here with rainwater and the gas bubbles collect above the surface and they ex uh, ex exit from the bubbler through a one-way valve to form the output of HHO from the system itself. The items marked with blue dots uh, form just one of three identical sets. Now that is three filters fan out from the bottom of the bubbler, the flow through them being caused by three separate pumps and two electrolyzer cells. And along with their associated pipes and four one-way valves, these are replicated to give electrolyzer cells 3, 4, 5 and 6, which aren't shown in the abo above diagram. Those three identical sets are connected to the central bubbler, which is here and quite large, and they are spaced evenly around it. So you have cell 1, cell 2, cell 3, cell 4, cell 5 and cell 6, all feeding into the central bubbler. Rainwater is circulated through the set of cells using three small pumps and there are two water collectors built onto the bottom of the bubbler and each electrolysis cell is completely full of so-called electrolyte and so it is a stream of electrolyte with HHO bubbles in it which is fed into the bubbler. Each of the three pumps has its own filter to trap any particles as experience has shown that rainwater can contain a good deal of additional material. The filters are standard irrigation inline filters made from transparent plastic tube and filled for three quarters of their length with fine plastic sponge material. A key feature of this cell is the use of two powerful neodymium magnets per cell. These act directly on the water and that causes a major increase in the gas production rate. The magnets have their north poles facing towards each other. The two mesh electrodes are made from stainless steel wire. It's wire which is 0.32 millimeters diameter and it's woven to give two millimeter holes between the wires and an overall sheet thickness of 0.65 millimeters. These dimensions are important as other mesh sizes and styles do not give so good a performance with this cell. The electrodes are wider at one end in order to form a connection tab which allows easy electrical connection to each electrode. The electrodes are then wired in parallel so that each cell gets 12 volts across it as shown here. The pus of the battery goes through a fuse and out to the plus uh, electrode in each cell. The 
battery goes directly to the plus electrode in each cell and there are six cells and the battery feeds all of those six cells. The two mesh electrodes are cut like this. You'll notice that they are different sizes. So one of the electrodes is cut 525 millimeters long and the other one is cut 550 millimeters long. Apart from that the dimensions are the same. The six electrolyzer cells and the single large bubbler are constructed using standard plastic plumbing materials. Now that means that you have an end cap which fits onto a piece of 2 mm, 50 mm or 2 inch diameter plastic pipe. It goes into a pipe collar and then the neodymium ring magnet which is an outer diameter of 40 millimeters, an inner diameter of 15 millimeters, and a thickness of 6 millimeters, and with the north pole facing downwards in this position, resting on a circular cutout of um, plastic, which is exactly the same diameter as the 50 millimeter plastic pipe. Then you have the same at the bottom, you have a pipe collar the neodymium magnet, this time with the north pole facing upwards, are sitting on a plastic magnet support disc uh, sitting on a piece of 50 millimeter diameter plastic pipe and seated into an end cap. Now, the way that it operates is you have 12 millimeter clear heat tolerant plastic pipe connecting the system together. There are one-way valves throughout the system and the electrolytic cell has got completely filled with water. This is rainwater. And the actual electrodes are wound round and round each other and are connected top and bottom with an outside copper wire. Now this is actually quite an important point because Stainless steel is not a great conductor of electricity, so having the two sides connected externally is helpful. So you have that for both the positive connection and the negative connection. And then you have, you can see the support disc for the uh, neodymium magnet. This one has the north pole facing upwards. This one has the north pole facing downwards. And those poles help considerably in increasing the output of HHO gas. There is again a one-way valve and the supply pipe which comes from the upper collector. The connecting pipes are heat tolerant clear plastic 12 millimeter or half inch diameter. The bubbler fabrication is also accomplished using plastic plumbing materials and is constructed like this very simple, you just have an end cap, a 100 millimeter diameter plastic pipe and an end cap and that is the construction of the device itself. Now the bubbler gets fed a mixture of HHO bubbles and the electrolyte which is rainwater and it gets fed in from each of the two cells. There are two pieces of uh, splash protection material pumice or fibre pot scrubber material. The idea is to catch any splashes and to allow gas through and let the splashes drip back into the container itself. There's also a pumice piece down near the bottom and that uh, keeps the bubbles going upwards and the water going downwards. The water goes down to the pump and goes on to the lower collector. Now some people have difficulty in visualizing the way in which the electrodes are combined so this sketch may help. You have the electrodes wound round and round and round each other from the two sides. They are kept separated by small fiber washers which are held in place between them as strategic places using super glue. The mesh itself is then treated 
by being immersed in citric acid in order to make it work well with rainwater, which is the electrolyte. There are three pairs of electrolyzer cells, each pair being connected to the upper collector reservoir. The water being pumped out of each cell is passed through one of the three filters before entering the collecting reservoir, which feeds the small pump which keeps the water circulating. Now, there is also obviously a filter on each of the three pumps which keeps removing any particles which have got into the rainwater. When used with rainwater from a collecting barrel in Australia, this electrolyzer draws 1.4 amps per cell, giving a total input of about 115 watts when being run on a 12 volt electrical supply. While rainwater is supposedly pure, the reality is that it seldom is, and its ability to carry current varies dramatically from place to place, and even more widely, from country to country. If you decide to build this electrolyzer and then find that you don't get anything like 1.4 amps flowing through any one cell, then you may well have to add a small amount of electrolyte to the water in order to get the current flowing. Now a word of warning. Do not, under any circumstances, ignite any HHO gas in the open air, as the sound shock waves which are created from even one cupful of the gas could damage your hearing permanently, leaving you deaf for the rest of your life. These notes can be downloaded free from the website under the name hog.pdf.